All right, folks, welcome back to Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena. Military Appreciation Night. You see the stars and stripes on the helmets. And the Shock looking for their first win here at home since May the 8th. Folks, one of the toughest places to play in indoor football has not proved to be very hospitable for Spokane, though you can't fault the fans for that one. Spokane trying to turn the tide here tonight against the Rattlers. Arizona won the opening coin flip. They have deferred. Spokane will receive to start the ball game. The Rattlers wearing the road white and Spokane wearing the home blues here on a Friday night. There's Raul V. Hill, legendary receiver on the left and Warren Smith, the up and coming quarterback on the right. Though we do understand Arvell Nelson will be making the start here tonight it will be his afl starting debut as a quarterback and that's amazing nelson as long as he's been around in this league and he's seen snaps at quarterback but to have his first start after this many years in the league x uh, yet another x factor going into tonight's game and our kickoff is brought to you by your locally owned napa auto parts store so we'll get a touch back. No return from Anthony Amos, who has taken over kick return duties. And our first look at the shock offense here tonight, led by the aforementioned Arvell Nelson, a midseason acquisition. Uh, came over, the, the shock were pursuing him heavily to rejoin the team. And here he is. He's a dynamic player. He can play all sorts of positions, but right now they need him under center and cool under fire. Yeah, he's a big character guy, a lot of respect from his teammates and very versatile and a great athlete. Here's a deep ball, it's a little overthrown, it's bobbled and incomplete. Dangerous throw and broken up by Marquise Floyd, the dynamic defensive back. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Spokane Shock. You see Nelson, the quarterback, they need some help at receiver, they got it. Rashad Carter back after going on injured reserve for six games with uh, thumb surgery. He's joined by Truesdale and company. Afif, Tapua, and Gallant in your offensive line. Second down, quick throw, just over the linebacker. It <laughs> is complete to Amos, right at the first down marker. And that will move the chains. Nice pass, that, that had a lot of touch on it because he had to fit it in over a Jack linebacker who sniffed out the left side left offensive side of the field, but in front of Floyd. That, that was a great pass, There's a lot of precision on that pass. First completion for Nelson. First down and 10 from the 15, quick throw. And Nick Truesdale, the six foot five receiver just out of his range. Meanwhile, for the Arizona Rattlers defensively, it'll be McAdoo, Hawthorne, and Dukes on the line. McLeod, Wells, Floyd, Kellum, the defensive back, watch out for him, leads the league in interceptions along with our Keith Brown in the secondary. Arizona, 28 sacks, second in the AFL. That's gonna be an interesting one to follow, what kind of protection Nelson gets. Carter is the motion man. Wide open was Amos. Good read Amos. by the young quarterback, Arvell Nelson. Sets up a third down and manageable four. Good protection up front and three progressions. Look left, look center, and then went to the right. So that's really an early good sign. Good protection and Nelson going through his progressions and an accurate pass to top it off. There's Anthony Amos, who has emerged as the go-to wide receiver over the last month or so with Mike Washington out with the season-ending Achilles injury. On third down, it is Amos with the catch of the 15 and into the dasher board, covered by Kellum, and that will move the chain. Well-designed play. You see high motion here. Kellum leaning inside. And that ball thrown to the outside on just kind of a, a semi-corner out route. Very well-designed play all the way around. Gain of 18 moves him up to the Arizona 11-yard line on this opening drive of this ball game. First down, 10 to go from the 11. Again, it's Carter in motion. Nelson with time. A little wobbler, and it's intercepted. Boy, that was a duck and plucking it out of midair was Jeremy Kellum. 
and I sure think that was deflected. Kellum leading AFL with 12 picks, count at 13 after that play, but pretty sure this ball got deflected the line of scrimmage. Let's see if it got deflected or if his arm got hit. Yeah, he couldn't t entirely follow through yeah. on that. So uh, clearly affecting the flight trajectory of the ball. League leading 13th interception for Jeremy Kellum. That gives the Rattlers a league best 23 interceptions on the season. And that last drive sums up Spokane's woes all season long. Moving the ball, getting in scoring position. Now that wasn't red zone, but getting there, knocking on the door of the red zone and just not finishing and coming away with points. Davila's pass completed to A.J. Cruz for a gain of nine. Reed is the motion man. Carry Reed, throw over the middle, caught by Reed at the 20, covered by Gilliam. Sergio Gilliam with the tackle. Take a look at the Arizona starting offense. We mentioned Nick Davila, former Spokane shot great in the AF2 days. Rod Windsor leads that stellar receiving core. Dennis, Carvalho, and Carter, the offensive line, which has not allowed a sack in eight games. Davila, five of those games. First and 10 from the 23. Davila, complete to Cruz. Cruz is down near the 11 yard line. Marked down at the 12. Here's the shock defense, which has its hands full. After that 15 yard pickup, Ruffin, Taylor, and King. Really the strength of this defense is that front three. Summers, great Mac linebacker. McCullough, the chainsaw. And then a new look secondary. Dodd Masters, McMillan, and Gilliam. And a switch already. Kelly in there is the edge rusher rather than King on the left side. There's Windsor. Rod Windsor makes his first catch. They're inside the red zone at the six. Windsor with four consecutive games with 100 or more yards receiving. One of the game's all-time greats, and Nick Davila, who for all intents and purposes got his start here in Spokane back in the AF2 days, and boy, he has really blossomed in the AFL. And look who's high motion, your go-to guy, Windsor. Gonna run the ball here inside the five, Michael Benson. Arizona Rattlers coming in at 12 and two on the season, trying to catch up to the San Jose Sabercats, trying to lock down that number one overall position in the National Conference. The standings settled yet unsettled. At the top, Arizona San Jose, both still in the hunt for the one and two seat. They will be the one and two. The question is who is one and who is two? Reed in motion this time, Davila to throw. In the corner and caught for the touchdown. It's Kerry Reed as Davila delivered a perfect strike for his 66th touchdown pass of the season as the Rattlers strike first here in the opening quarter. Well, Davila, he's an experience. Yo, let's, let's check the flag here. Offside, defense, number 36. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, touchdown. So the call stands on the touchdown. Davila, again, with a perfect strike. Uh, talking about Davila, with his experience, he's gonna spread the ball around, very effective. But his key go-to target we know is Windsor. Reed right there is his second go-to target. And with that, we take our first timeout of the ball game. Arizona leads it by seven. Seven to nothing on your VPI Windows Custom Fit for Life scoreboard. Six plays, 45 yards in three minutes and seven seconds on your VPI Home Windows, Home Solutions, excuse me, scoring recap. Davila to Reed on the touchdown as the Rattlers lead seven to nothing with 8.09 to play in the opening quarter. And there's some points off that opening turnover for Spokane. Yeah, again, and it has haunted Spokane all season. 
And on the receiving end of that, of hitting pay dirt, Reed, 21 touchdowns now in the season, wins are 30. So a picture, 20, 51 scoring touchdowns from those two receivers. Through the slack net, no return for Amos on the kick by Fabrizio Scaccia. Take a timeout, seven to nothing, your score in Spokane. Well, for those of you watching in Spokane, you're used to this site, but for those of you watching, perhaps in Arizona or around the world on ESPN3, this is what summer looks like in Spokane. And if this is what summer looks like, imagine what spring looks like with that river raging. It is a sight to behold, and those waterfalls never shut off. That is a year-round year scene here in Spokane. Well, Spokane trying to open the valve on its offense right now. First play. Broken up, incomplete, intended for Amos, and broken up by his old college teammate, Jeremy Kellum. Nelson a little late getting the ball out of his hand. He got knocked down, and the throw was just slightly by, behind the receiver instead of out front. If it was thrown in front of the receiver, that's a catch. Allowed a great defensive play to be made. Those two playing together on opposite sides of the football back in college at Middle Tennessee State. Second down and 10. Nelson, quick throw on the slant. It's caught. Down to the 20 is Rashad Carter, and that'll move the chains on a gain of 15. Gain of 15 on the play. Well, Nelson certainly made the adjustment on that play because he could not have been a nanosecond quicker getting the ball out. Receiver barely able to get his head around and, and get that ball, and that's what you need from Nelson. Quick read, quick release. That's what the great ones do in the game. Carter, meanwhile, showing no ill effects from that thumb surgery from the 20-yard line. Pump and brought down at the 15-yard line. He's trying to fire deep. Pocket collapsed around him. Nelson brought down on the set. And Nelson actually had a little room to run, but he tripped over the defensive lineman's foot, and that's what dropped him to the ground. There, there was an edge rusher waiting there. May have been able to tackle him, but if Nelson hadn't tripped, he'd probably at least get back to the line of scrimmage and maybe busted one a little bit. Loss of four on the play. Second down and 14. Arizona leading this one with six minutes to play. And the first ball came loose. On the exchange. And recovered on the exchange by the quarterback, Nelson. Just giving plays away when that happens. Spokane near the bottom of the standings as far as turnover margin. Got to take care of the football. Spokane coming in ranked seventh in the AFL, minus six. Arizona second in the AFL, plus 19. And Spokane starting six different quarterbacks this year, 22 interceptions last in the AFL. Well, actually first in interceptions thrown this year. Take an incompletion over an interception, but third and long, or fourth and long. Intended for Anthony Amos, who again has emerged as the leading receiver on the shock. 81 catches, 894 yards, 13 scores. Now keep in mind, that's with Mike Washington, who they call him the joystick, and for good reason. He was a jitterbug out there, gone with an Achilles injury. And up comes Anthony Amos. Fourth down and 16. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Amos was wide open, and he just dropped it. And the, the line to gain was at the 20. Amos was where he should be on the 18, 19-yard line. Clearly a drop. Spokane turns it over on downs. The Arizona Rattlers back on offense when we come back. Welcome back to Spokane. Let's look at tonight's keys to the game brought to you by Spokane Boys, your answer for all seasons. Well, obviously, get ahead early. Shock have really struggled when they've got behind, and Arizona already answered that first interception with the score and knocking on the door again. Arizona defensive backs, they are ball hawks. Spokane's been turnover prone. Very difficult combo here, advantage Rattlers. Take a look at this Spokane keys in just a moment. Arizona with the ball from the shock 14. Throw into the end zone is incomplete. Flag comes in 
play. It'll be either a defensive hold or pass interference. And you've got your choice, a hold clearly prior to the ball in the air, and if you maintain the hold with it in the air, it'll turn into a pass interference. That's a deciding factor between hold and P.I. Pre-ball in the air, it's a hold. After it's in the air, P.I. Our first Two fouls occurred on the play, both on the defense. Illegal formation, number 11, not in a three-point stance. Pass interference, defense, number 26. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Your referee, John Love. The umpire, Al Granado. Headlinesman, Andy Warner. Line judge, Terry Valenti. Right, back judge, Craig Faulkner. And on replay tonight, Buddy Ward. Drive continues now inside the Spokane red zone. From the seven, first and goal. Reed, the motion man. And it's Benson down to the five as we continue our Spokane boys keys to the game. Well, key number one, let's start with being competitive. Play, play with heart, play with the same intensity as the last matchup against Arizona, which we witnessed. Spokane was in that game right to the end, late in the fourth quarters when that game got decided. And have to have a strong performance from this position at quarterback to have any shot at victory against this Arizona team. Rod Windsor, high motion on second down and goal. The throw is to Windsor. Did he hang on? He did. Touchdown number 200 comes in Spokane as Windsor has caught a touchdown now in 28 consecutive games. Well, as we said, you get in the red zone. Windsor's your number one go-to. Reed's your number two go-to. Well, Davila, two for two with both of them on both his visits down there to the uh, to shock pay dirt land so far. Scotia now on to attempt his second point after in a two touchdown ball game. Inside of three minutes in this first quarter, that has been all Arizona. PAT nearly blocked, but it goes through the slack net. And Davila strikes again, his second touchdown pass. This one going to Windsor, and it's 14 to nothing. Arizona. Winners of eight in a row, playing like it right now. Hottest team in arena football, leads it 14 to nothing here in Spokane against the Shock. Anthony Amos back to return. Shock just needs something, anything right now. Uh, a spark. <laughs> get the defibrillators out, someone. Let's get a big spark here and answer with the score and, and get the team and the fans back in this game, because right now, Shock are flat, fans are dead. Figuratively speaking, of course. And all the momentum with Arizona. Spokane needs to show some signs of life, really. Their biggest culprit has been the offense, or lack thereof. Four of their last six losses, the Shock have scored 28 points or less. Still to yet to get on the scoreboard here. There's the ball off the net. Amos out of the end zone, and he won't reach the five. That's where the shock will take over. Trying to get on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. We're inside of three minutes. That was outstanding kickoff return coverage by Arizona. Often goes on look, looks pretty routine, but there were three white jerseys in on that tackle. Spokane starts this drive from their own four. Nelson's pass caught at the 10. This is Nick Truesdale with his first reception of the ball game. Up to the 10. Four yards to go. And Truesdale with that big six, I should say long, six, seven frame, able to stretch and get an extra yard. Just by stretching with that frame, you average another yard per catch. Boy, he'd be a great guy to put in a quarterback in the goal line. He could just take the ball out of the snap and just reach across the goal line from three yards out. 
That's a good strategy, Sam. We, <laughs> we may see that. <laughs> I don't know how legal it is, but it it's, would certainly work. It's completely legal. <laughs> Amos with the catch up to the 16, moves the chain. Sam, I like that thinking. That is some creative thinking. Hey, take what tools you have available. <laughs> Snap, long reach, touchdown. You know, and, and when you're looking at the toolbox right now for Andy Olson, sometimes it feels like, you know, maybe are you at the bottom of the toolbox? Well, that's when you get your most creative. From the 16, there's a pass again. How about Amos with a shake and bake? Down inside the 20, all the way down, his helmet comes off, down to the 17-yard line. And mark it down at the 16, a gain of 18, as Amos makes an ankle-breaking catch and run. And gets his helmet taken off and doesn't get hurt in the process. You can see the retreat and then just fight now that's heart that's being competitive fighting for extra yardage all those white shirts trying to take him down that's the type of competitiveness spokane has to have as an entire offensive defensive unit tonight throw underneath incomplete to amos very small sample size for arvell nelson as the starting quarterback right now but so far i gotta say pretty good yeah he's done if you look the interception that's not on him any quarterback who gets his arm hit that ball's up for grabs that's going to happen to anyone over the course of the season uh the incompletion on the drop ball on fourth down great throw by nelson that's his receiver just not making a play amos now in high motion pump fake to him it's nick truesdale on the near side gets a nice little pick from patrick of thief how about the creative play call here for Spokane? Two yards shy of the first down marker as quarter number one is in the books. Spokane trails by 14, but is marching. When we come back, the shock will be inside the red zone, trailing this one against the Rattlers, 14 to nothing. Another warm afternoon. Nearby Riverfront Park, one of the many splash pads around town. Spokane has not made much of a splash inside the red zone. We are inside the KFC red zone. Spokane ranking dead last in the AFL in red zone percentage. Meatloaf once said two out of three ain't bad. Well, in the AFL it is. Spokane 38 of 58 inside the red zone. And earlier tonight committing their eighth red zone turnover. In fact. They're about 50% right now in their last 21 trips here, 11 of 21. They'll go to the ground here on first and goal. And Arvell Nelson, that's one thing he, or excuse me, on third down, that he really brings to the table. The ability oh. to run the football. And look at what, what that has done to set, set up the red zone. Now first and goal from the four. And this is where Spokane at times has self-destructed. That penalty has crept in so many times. Last week, Spokane had the ball fourth quarter in the red zone, 10-yard penalty, could not convert. It wouldn't surprise me to see another run here. On first and goal. They give it to Rory Nixon. Near the end zone at the goal line. We await the call. Just shy of the touchdown. Now he ran into his own player who was against the dasher board, but that is of no consequence. The player with the ball must hit the dasher board. So apparently he he hit the dasher board before he went in. But that was, uh, let's, let's look at this. He hits his, wow, tough angle. Can't really tell. That was mighty close. The officials talking right now. The game clock has yet to move here inside the arena. And it's moved one tick now to 14.59 through two plays here in the second quarter. Correct me if I'm wrong, but time does not stand still here in Spokane. Uh, <laughs> it shouldn't. And Olsen's having a dialogue with the officials out there, perhaps considering throwing the red flag. But if you're this close, I say run the ball again. Timer, please reset the clock to 14 minutes even. 14 minutes even. So there's the time that was standing still. <laughs> that's, that's how to just time travel, up. right? <laughs> there you go. You just get that flux capacitor, you move up. We're a minute forward in time, people. Time travel is pop 
possible. Boy, I hope I don't age that quickly, Sam. <laughs> There's your trips formation here. Now Amos is the motion man. A lot of attention given to the receivers. Stopped at the goal line. Boy, I'm talking like maybe a six inches out was Arvell Nelson. He feels like he might have pushed through. And again, apparently not, but I agree with the play calling. Take, take the X factor and that out of the equation. You just got to get a little lower if you can as, as for Nelson. You've got the push, getting the push from behind, trying to strip the ball. Just officials say didn't quite get across. He'll get the push from Nixon this time if he can hang on to the football. Still await the ruling. And they're saying, officials are saying short. Wow. And the fans, uh, the hometown fans, aren't liking that ruling. Of course, we can't tell from our vantage point. All we know is it's very, very close. They're going to shuttle in uh, Bryson Kelly now, I believe. Let's see. Did he get the push? I don't know how that's not a touchdown. That is. <sighs> yeah, we, we don't have the sideline view, but there was a great push in there. Kelly, the fullback, will take it in. Four time to charm. Kelly will spike it, the punctuation mark, as finally with 12 minutes of change in the second corner. The Spokane Shocker on the scoreboard. Coach, Tenth play of that drive. The last five on the ground. The Nelson get, get first and goal on third down. And then four more straight rushes finally getting in the end zone. But I like the commitment to the run. I think it's the right thing to do. Especially, Sam, as you pointed out, what's, how Spokane's been ineffective in the red zone. Taylor Rowan's kick is good. The shock are on the board. 14 to 7. Bryson Kelly, standout college player, running the football at Central Washington. He punches it in. It's 14 to 7. There's some of the greatest fans you're going to see in indoor football, and they retreated to Arbel Nelson directing that touchdown drive, capped off by the Bryson Kelly touchdown run. Much needed points for this team that is still looking for a lot of answers late in the season. And as we talked in the break, Sam, it, I, it wouldn't surprise either of us if Spokane tried an onside kick here. See what Taylor Rowan does here. Play is whistle dead. No kick because the dasher board fell over on the 15 yard line. Saw Rowan practicing those onside kicks during warmups. He was right on the money. Each kick was going high and right to the 10. And that one certainly found the net. He's had a practice try. Now let's try to find the, bo the bar. Don't you hate it when the dasher board falls down? <laughs> <laughs> it, well, 
especially if your player going at it and you hit the sideboards instead of the, that padded wall. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a really bad day. And we've, we've hugged those dashboards right there when we're talking to players and coaches right down there. You're leaning right on that thing. We've been there as fans as well. Some of those stories we, we can repeat, others we cannot. But those things are hanging on by Velcro. They will come off. Rowan's kick through the slack net. No return for Cruz. Uh, touchback for the Rattlers. Souvenir football. Every ball that goes into the stands in arena football is a souvenir. Well, we have had four kicks so far. Three have gone in the slack net combined by these kickers. It's pretty good production off the foot. Now, if you're Spokane, you're just hoping for a bar ball. And when Taylor Rowan has it dialed in, boy, he can really get, because that's where those weird, funny hops in arena football happen, is off the bar ball. Rowan had four bar balls in a single game last year. Davila's throw complete. Covered by Dodd Masters, but Windsor will pick up the first down. Windsor's just, look at that frame, just a good looking athlete. Windsor, well, six foot two, 215 pounds, and he fills it out. And it's, it's, a, it's a thick, strong, fast, quick, 215 pounds. Wow. Drive continues from the 16. Cruz is the motion man. Davila, the southpaw, brought down, loose ball. And Ruffin up. was in on it. Believe, let's see. And, that looked, and Arizona does recover. Yeah, that looks like Ruffin just fighting off the edge on the outside, circling all the way around, stripping the left-handed Davila, but the rest of Spokane D not able to recover. Watch Ruffin on the right side. Bottom of the screen, coming around, and there you have it. That'll go down as a sack. Sack and a forced fumble. First sack allowed by Arizona in more than two months. Second and 15, flag on the play. Dodd Masters blew up the receiver, Windsor. And Windsor felt that one. He is slow getting up. Masters blew up a very physical Windsor. He went ballistic like a heat-seeking missile on that play. Now, let's see who this is against. If this is against Arizona, you decline it. It's third and long. If this is against Spokane, huge break for Arizona. Wouldn't you agree, this is where Arizona has to be careful. Spokane is at its best when it generates a pass rush and hurries those throws. Here's the call. Illegal formation, defense, shading, number 36. Spokane is in the bonus, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. That would be Arizona in the bonus. All right, I bet this is where you need to crank it look, up. Yeah, but look at that. Hey, you can see that hanky at the top of the screen, but God masters just pulverizing Windsor. First and 10 after the penalty. Hurried throw, Windsor makes the catch. A little stutter step along the dasher board. They'll mark him down just shy of midfield. That's two yards shy of the first down. Tell you what, I don't know the last time that Davila has seen a pass rush like this. I, I can't remember the last time we've seen a pass rush like this for Spokane. It's been a while. Davila flips this one and watch out as the fullback, Michael Benson. Benson to the five. And in for the touchdown. Dodd Masters almost stripped it loose, but a big play by Michael Benson, the fullback. Stunned silence here in Spokane. 26 yards. What a turn of event, events here on that touchdown. And McCullough at the Jack linebacker took an inside angle. Benson, whether he read it or just by chance, bounced to the outside. And then there was some outstanding downfield blocking. That, just all kinds of green for Benson to run through to the end zone. Scotchip off the bar. No good. 
20 to seven, Arizona with the lead. Little catch and run from the big fella, Michael Benson. Arizona finds pay dirt for a third time. 26 yard strike, Nick Davila, his third touchdown pass. This one going to Michael Benson, capping off a four play, 45 yard touchdown drive that went two minutes and 40 seconds. That's your VPI Home Solutions scoring recap. Well, here's an interesting stat for you, Mike. Percentage of plays with plus yardage. Arizona in this game, 11 of 12, 92%. All but one of their plays has netted positive yardage. Only half of Spokane's 22 plays have gone for positive yardage. Amos off the net to the 5'10", 15. And on the dasher board at the 20 yard line. Nice return from Anthony Amos, 27 yards. Well, no, no secret, Spokane's offense has struggled a large part of the season. Last week, zero points in the first half. First time in franchise history that they have been shut out through the first two quarters of any game. But it happened last week, last Sunday. Short week for Spokane coming off that disappointing loss to the L.A. Kiss. Well, we've seen too many quarters this year where the offense hasn't scored a point in a single quarter. And Kelly yeah. lost the football, and Arizona's going to recover. They will. Kelly never had a hold of it, lost it. Arizona recovers. Second turnover of the ball game, though a thief is battling for the football. And Kelly's still down there battling for the football, but the officials have already signaled it is Arizona's ball. I beg your pardon, that was Kelly that was fighting for the football. But even though Kelly came up with it, officials said Arizona is on the ball, that the play is dead. Yeah, it's a combination of that pitch being a little too high. You don't want it being up around the face mask and Kelly not able to corral it. That's a. That's a shared fumble between quarterback and running back. They both had a hand in that one. Arizona takes over. Seven and a half to play in the half. From the 18 in shock territory. Davila feeling the rush. He's brought down at the 24. Ruffin and Summers brought the heat. Ruffin, of course, always tough on the outside. And I think Summers is going to get the sack. That he just torpedoed through the middle of that Arizona line. This is a place Dobula has it. Watch Summers untouched, able to just dive in and corral him, and Ruffin sitting there on the edge. Spokane, its second defensive sack of the ball game after being held to just eight sacks in their previous eight games. There's the pass rush we've been talking about. Play is whistled dead. I believe that's going to be a delay of game. It is certainly going to be a delay of game. Delay of game, offense, number 10, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. I mean, when you have this defense flicking like it is right now, it is intoxicating for this crowd. They feed off of each other. Spokane, we talked about competing. You could, the defense could have easily hung their head after another sloppy turnover by the offense. No, the fans got into it. The defense has stepped up. Arizona's in a hole. Davila hit again. Ball comes loose. It's inside the five yard line. Spokane recovers. It's Ruffin with the fumble recovery. And Davila is coming up, holding his left kind of collarbone area. But most importantly is Spokane coming and making a huge play. It was Terrence Taylor on the hit. He absolutely blew up the play. Domila lost it, but now there's some deliberation here. Did he lose the football or was Domila on the turf? The ruling is fumble. So Kevin Guy is gonna have to throw the challenge flag if he disagrees with the official ruling. There's Taylor. It's loose, that's a fumble and live. 
And you can see the beanbag down indicating someone on the officiating crew rolled a fumble. After the Let's ball listen. Came loose. Whistle was inadvertently sounded. The ball returns by Arizona. Second down. Unbelievable. Wow. And you can't that unring that bell. Is an unbelievable, horrific miscue by the person on the officiating crew that inadvertently blew that whistle. That is inexcusable as a referee. You're guessing if that happens. You are absolutely guessing. Are they saying even though the whistle was blown inadvertently, it's still a challengeable call? So the question is, was the inadvertent whistle blown after Spokane Corral possession? And that's the key, because during a, a loose ball, which you have on a fumble, offense still retains possession until it's clearly recovered by either team. So on the inadvertent whistle, if it was during the loose ball, it's gonna revert back to the offense. Andy Olson bringing out his troops in and Kevin Guy doing the same on the Arizona side. Because the key point, there's no question it was a fumble. You can see the beanbag down there. It looks like a beanbag on the 14 yard line indicating a, an official ruled a fumble. The question is inadvertent whistle. Does the, because the inadvertent whistle, a whistle still kills the play. And there's your beanbag. It was ruled a fumble. This is all about the whistle. The fans right now, you could hear the reaction probably at home right now on TV. They just saw what you saw moments ago. They saw that on the video board here inside the arena. But, but the key verbiage is inadvertent whistle. It's all about the timing of the whistle relative to the possession. So clearly a fumble, ball's loose, beanbags down. And you can see Davila grabbing that left elbow as he went down. And you can see the official on the left side not even really seeing what's going on, not aware of where the ball even is. So the now, officials right now looking now, at what you're seeing here. Watch on the TV. official on the left side. Here's the ball now. Well, look, look at where the eyes are. Not even looking at the ball, looking in. So obviously the official on the near side not even aware of what's going on. You can see the referee there alertly throwing the bean bag, staying with the play. So I gotta believe the whistle, the whistle came somewhere from the side is what it looks like. And it looks uh, just- well, now, now there you can see as the players are talking, wow, the discussion getting very animated right now. It looks like the play will be overturned. That's what we're hearing, but we wanna hear the explanation. For the, review, the quarterback was hit. The ball did come loose before he was down. Spokane recovered the ball. It will be Spokane's ball at the eight-yard line, first and goal. At the eight-yard line, he says. That's where the, so the That's ruling the is, because they talk inadvertent. In. And that was the, the whole key. So the ball's out. You see a recovery. So really, it should have been about the seven yard line, but nonetheless, Spokane's just happy to come away with the ball. Okay, so, so the shot not challenged a timeout, obviously, or charged a timeout. And, and now, Mike, they said the eight, but the ball really was the seven. Yeah, was the seven yard line. Because the possession happened at the seven. If it was the eight, it would have been inadvertent whistle back to Arizona. Nelson rifles one into the end zone. Amos right on the number five and in for the touchdown. Arvell's first touchdown pass as a starting quarterback and the shot at pulled back within a touchdown. Spokane showing they can overcome adversity and even overcome an adversity of a, uh, of an official's whistle there to come up with the ball and convert a red zone's chance as well, Sam. Rowan on the point after, and it's good. 
Spokane climbs within six as Amos wide open for the touchdown as we send you to break on our VPI Windows custom fit for life scoreboard. Look at downtown Spokane near Riverfront Park. And there's River Park Square in the background. Now, speaking of triple plays, how about triple threats for Spokane? Three different defenders have created three sacks, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery. And equally important, three different players from Spokane's front four. Ruffin on the edge, Taylor up the middle as a nose guard, and Summers is a Mac linebacker. That's production. Cruz from the back of the end zone. Has a gap. And he's wrapped up at the 16-yard line. Arizona has moved backwards 24 yards on those three sacks. And Davila, despite that, has still completed nine of nine passes. Davila is so good. But he's in an area he's not been before. <laughs> at least in the last eight games, it's remarkable. No sacks in the last eight games. We're still in the first half, and he's already been sacked three times. He's getting banged around, too. He's getting battered. Crowd getting loud here in Death Valley. Windsor on the reception, trying to slip through the defense, trying to cut through Kelly and Summers, or excuse me, Ruffin on the tackle. That play is a smart call by Kevin Guy, the offensive coordinator, and it's a reflection of the respect <laughs> he now has for this Spokane front four, because that was a one-step drop and get the ball out. He was not gonna risk a sack whatsoever or get his quarterback all banged up. And Davila has missed some games because of injury due to getting sacked. Cruz on the run to the 21. That moves the chains. Needed six and got the first down. Another quick hitting safety play for your quarterback. And again, that's smart play call, and they're getting production out of it too. Two plays, one step drop. That's not even a, a, a drop. That's just a pitch. Davila with many fond memories here playing in Spokane, but not so welcome, warm welcome here for the former AF2 member of the shot. Davila under pressure, throws, count. And down inside the 10, will be a first down at the nine yard line. It is well. It's Reed. First and goal for the Rattlers. Excuse me, that's Buckner on the catch. Dan Buckner. So Arizona marching downfield, looking to respond in kind. Leading by six, 3-10 to play in the second quarter. Davila lob into the end zone, incomplete. Receiver wants pass interference, Kerry Reed not going to get it. Coverage by Mike McMillan, who was down on the turf. McMillan and Reed bumped and came together. There clearly was contact, but the official rule, they, that contact was created by both players, thus no flag. Davila's first incompletion. He's now 11 out of 12. Second down and goal from the shock nine. There's Windsor. Windsor plows right through the defender and into the end zone. Went right through Gilliam to get in for the score. Wins. That was all on Reed. That's his, or Windsor, excuse Windsor's me. Windsor's physicality, we talked about at the open, how strong he is at getting yards after the catch. Absolutely personified and on full display on that last play, Sam. Mike mentioned that that athletic build of Rod Windsor and Sergio Gilliam certainly got a handful of that. Scotia misses again. His second miss in four attempts on points after as we have another look at this touchdown. And there's the throw, great check off to the back side and then Windsor just keeping the feet going, just muscled his way in. So all the attention flooded on the near end of the field and then on the far side 
Rod Windsor with career touchdown number 201. His 32nd touchdown reception this year. Former shock player, Will Mulder, now coaching the secondary this year. You talk about some turnover at that position. There's Coach Cruisenberry, who's it's been a steady force on defense. It's really relied on those front guys, but it's been the secondary that's been maligned this year. A lot of different guys shuttling in and out, finding anything that can stick. Yeah, it's uh, there's been two carousels in, Spok in Spokane land this year. The quarterback carousel and the defensive back carousel. And those are two pretty key positions when you think about it. In a pass-oriented game, absolutely. We saw Radical Rick before the game. You see the red, white, and blue haircut. He, he had seen that the Spokane Shock helmets were going to be red, white, and blue. So he went out, got the stencil, the spray paint, whatever it is you do. I wouldn't know because I don't have hair, but sounds good enough. High off the net, here's Amos, who had a nice return his last time. This time he'll get up to the seven. Well, Radical Rick, as we saw there with the hair, his hair is to mimic, and he does it every game, mimic the Spokane Shocks helmet. And he was talking, he, go, he goes, I went online, I saw tonight's helmet, so I go, hey, I'm going to sport the red, white, and blue, just like the Shock. That's Typically cool. it's just an S and then whatever version, what, if it's going to be blue or white or orange. Well, here he had to redo the whole thing. I bet if you talk to him, he'd paint your head for broadcast, Sam. That's true. He actually uh, brought a wig for me this time. I, <laughs> I, I politely declined. He did. I can attest. First down. Quick throw. This is Carter. Rashad Carter. Past midfield. Still going. Down at the 19. Rashad <laughs> Carter bringing some much-needed life to this offense on a gain of 23. And with that, we go to the one-minute warning. Big catch and run from the young fellow, Rashad Carter. We come back with the final minute of the first half after this. Shock trailing by two touchdowns with their one-minute warning. Mike, what do you do on this drive if you're Spokane on offense? There's one strategy and one strategy only. You're not going to get cutesy with the clock or anything like that. You're just going to find a way to get in the end zone and score. And if you do it with 50 seconds left on the play clock, fine. Turn it over to the D. From the 19, Nelson lost his footing, throws a lob in into the stands. He was just trying to get rid of that football. Busted play, wise decision from Arvell Nelson, who's playing very well here in his first start as an Arena Football League quarterback. Yeah, as you as you called it, Nelson stumbled coming out. I don't know if he just stumbled on his own or oftentimes you get clipped by one of your offensive linemen. And there are, and not towards midfield, but there are some points, especially near the end zones, where you get those little swales in the turf. Yeah. But I don't think in midfield that's as much, the, the rug is much tighter there. Ooh, wow. How about that pick? Callum meet Truesdell as a blocker. <laughs> oh, that was a layoff oh, he's, block. He's looking right there. He wants to see that replay. Watch go to the you. block. Boom. I mean, that's a short game, but as a receiver, you take a ton of pride in that. Oh, that's a statement. Well, Windsor got physical with Spokane. Truesdale comes back and says, fine, we can get physical with you, Arizona DBs. Turnabout is fair play. <laughs> it's just a blow-up block. Turn this into a pinball machine game. Third down and seven, 49 seconds to play. Throw, and Amos slides down to the one-yard line. He could have gotten back up, but I think they're going to play the clock game here. I think so, but I disagree. I'm not. If Amos is playing the clock game, don't. 
This is where I'm saying, don't, it's not a time to get cute. It's a time to just get points. He may have just lost track of where he was on the field, no, thought he was in he, the end zone and fell down. Let's but look. Mike, he slides, he still could have gotten back up. Look right there, anytime you can get back up. Well, and you, but look at it, look at his body length, look at his hands. Uh, no, I, I'm I think not, he's trying if, to get down and take time off the clock. Right there, his body, his body language is, hey, what's going on? It's, he wasn't touched, he's not even touched at this point. Just, unless it got grazed from a different camera angle, this ball is, that ball would have been live. I, strange play. Red zone offense has not been Spokane's forte. Can they push it through? They do this time. Arvell Nelson on the keeper. And the shot climb back within a touchdown. 34 seconds remain in the half. Well, Spokane has shown when it wasn't looking very strong at 20 to seven in Arizona with the ball, that by golly, we are gonna compete and we're gonna be in this game with Arizona. We are gonna fight. And Rowan on to attempt the point after now to make it a five point differential. Still baffled by the play before. I think yeah. we're gonna to have to interview him to know what's going on there. Maybe the only guy who knows on the football field is number five, Anthony Amos. It was set up by Amos and then the push, Kelly pushing that quarterback, Arvell Nelson into the end zone. So Arvell doing a little bit of everything here as he's thrown into the end zone for touchdowns and now a run into the end zone for a touchdown. There's your favorite guy right there. We assume a guy, right? I mean, it could the, be. The hamster. The hamster. Yes. You call it many different things, Mike, in the, I, in the I, interest of full disclosure. I, I, you called it a chipmunk. And a gopher. A gopher. Yep. And a gerbil. And a I think you called the gerbil. Was that me? No, that was you. Mike. Okay, I have four yeah. different names. So gopher, hamster, gerbil. Yep. Yep. And chipmunk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. And the shock the fox. Always yeah. get that one. We know right. that 55. one. Fifty-five. That's a fox. Shocks the fox with two X's. I've I've never missed that one. No. Yeah, I've, I've kind of missed on the other mascot, haven't I? You know, yeah. Thanksgiving. You know, just just think it over. Maybe. Invite the whole family over, the whole hamster family over for, for some turkey at the Peterson house, okay? Yeah, well, we have hamsters for hors d'oeuvres for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, that, that, uh, no, that, that was a joke. <laughs> I hope so, Mike. <laughs> Otherwise, you've just done your last broadcast. <laughs> the turkey hamster hors d'oeuvres. I better not invite the hamster over. <laughs> <laughs> just like they did back in the 1600s. Yes. Probably a delicatessen. Off the bar, there's the bar ball, watch out. And it's recovered by the shock. Kevin McCullough, the chainsaw, I think got in on it. And now it's Rashad Carter. Spokane recovers on a much needed bar ball and they have a chance to take the lead. Remarkable turnabout and exactly what the doctor ordered. We talked about Taylor Rowan, his prowess at times of finding the bar. How opportunistic right at the bottom of the bar. You see McCullough come up, looked like he corralled it, got hit, ball came loose and alertly, <laughs> actually maybe not even not so alertly, just an opportune bounce right into the hands, bounces right up. There you go, right in the hands of Carter. So Spokane off the bar ball is in the KFC red zone. First and goal from the 10, underthrown. They had the right play dialed up. Deverick Gallington, and it was just a little bit too low for him to scoop it up. That ball was deflected, or that is probably a touchdown. It was a perfectly designed play. All three receivers to the left side, tight end all alone to the right. Uh, I, I believe this got deflected, and that's why it was short. There it is, there's a deflection. You can see the ball. Look at Andy in the bottom of that screen there. He, he was it. more disappointed than anybody else. He knew it. Great play call. Amos in the end zone, makes the grab, and the Shock have the lead with 19 seconds to play in the half. Andy Olsen has been asking 
pleading for anybody to take this team and lead them, take them on their shoulders. Anthony Amos has stepped up big here tonight. And a beautiful touch pass from his quarterback to feather that ball in over the top. It was perfect touch and trajectory. Great teamwork. Rowan perfect on the PAT. A monster first half for Anthony Amos on the throw from Arvell Nelson. This is touchdown number two. Nine catches, 93 yards here through two quarters of play for Anthony Amos. And attacking the interception leader of the season, Kellum right there with 13, had a pick earlier and saying, I don't care, we're going right at you for a lead. Again, two guys who play college football together at Middle Tennessee State. And you would think that the cornerback, the defensive back, Kellum would have the upper hand against the relatively untested Anthony Amos, but Amos is playing like a 10-year veteran out there. Well, Amos being a rookie, and he's played a lot, his only, he started in every game but the first game of the season, and he's just progressively gotten better, and he's really picked up the slack for Spokane, who severely misses Mike Washington. But most importantly, Spokane has clawed back, competed back, and battled and now has a lead. But this half isn't over. Can Spokane hold on to this lead? It's up to the defense and special teams. 19 seconds and one timeout for the Rattlers to work with. 19 seconds in eternity in arena football. The shock in their last four possessions now, averaging starting position inside Arizona territory on the Rattlers 17. Rowan's kick, off the low net this time. It's recovered though by Brown. And at the one. And Truesdell again blowing up Rattlers. I mean, we love Truesdale as a wide receiver, but boy, this guy can give a licking out there. And he plays every aspect of the game. What, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Brown knows it's coming. I'm just, I'm gonna just cover up and protect myself. And Truesdale, you know he loves this part of the game. He's a physical specimen. I think that guy might have a red, white, and blue tattoo. <laughs> well, I think the Rattler has a black and blue tattoo after that. It's called a bruise. From the one, Davila, quick throw, caught. This is Derek Dennis. The offensive line moving the chains with 12 seconds. Excuse me, moving up near the 10 yard line, not moving the chains, sets up second down. Arizona will take the timeout. And they burn their last timeout, and that's just trying to operate and get a little room. So if you're Kevin Guy, you have at least two, maybe three plays, but it's got, if it's three plays, it's gotta go like this. Quick hitter sideline, quick hitter sideline, bring in your field goal kicker or do the Hail Mary. If it's two plays, you're going to go the five-step drop, going to try to take a big shot down the field, then depend on the outcome, field goal or a second shot, assuming you get out of bounds. And that's assuming if they could even get five steps back with the way this defense has been playing for Spokane, you need a quick drop. You do, because if they go the five-step drop, are you going to get sacked? Double under pressure, throws! Almost intercepted. Is it that is one? intercepted. It is off the tip. It is intercepted. That is How did that ball stay off the turf? Dodd Masters got a hand on it. McMillan came up with a turnover. With an assist from the dasher board. Watch this. Teamwork, dasher board. There's the tip against the dasher board. Stayed with it. Wow. Kept his hands underneath. And even if Kevin Guy wants to review, that ain't going to be overturned. That is a spectacular defensive play, Sam. When it rains, it pours for the Spokane defense. They would have been content to just keep Arizona off the scoreboard, and now they're getting greedy. Seven seconds to play from their own 23-yard line. Three timeouts, only time to use one. I say take your shot downfield. If not, bring out Rowan. Nelson, quick throw. This is Carter. Puts it right over the dash of to stop the clock. Now it's decision time, and I'm not sure you can count on a 
three second play unless you're <laughs> unless it's a one step drop and you've got to get out of bounds quick. Well, they'll take a timeout and think about it. Can't take them with you. That's their first charge timeout. But you've already got the lead. Now, Taylor Rowan has not been automatic on field goals this year. He has struggled at times, but I still say odds are I like taking the points here. That's exactly what Spokane will attempt to do. And this is where a lot of things, here's that play again. The tip, the catch, the bobble, dasher board, and incredible concentration. And this will go down as a 35-yard field goal attempt for Taylor Rowan. Miss field goal, ball's live. Just critical kick for Rowan here. Good snap, clean hold. Plenty of leg, and it's through to end the first half. Boy, if this was basketball, you'd call this a big run to end the first half of action. Spokane trailed 20 to seven, and now leads it 31 to 26 going into the locker room. They needed a big first half. They got it against Arizona. As we head to half, it's 31-26. Upset alert here tonight in Spokane in Arena Football. Carousel goes around and around at Riverfront Park. One of the must-see things here in Spokane, especially during summertime. And right now we are indoors inside Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena. Sam Adams, Mike Peterson, thank you for joining us. If you are just joining us, Spokane has rallied back from being down 20 to six against Arizona, now leading this one. 31-26. Now, putting this in perspective, Spokane's last two games, both losses against San Jose and the LA Kiss, they have scored 27 and 28 points, respectively. Tonight, through two quarters, they've already surpassed that point total with 31. Here's your kickoff, Taylor Rowan. He's already had a bar ball, almost had another one as Cruz plucked it out from the end zone. Up to the 10, he's got some room to the 15. There's a flag down at the 15. Past midfield, Cruz into the end zone, but this one should be coming back. Glasper clipped Truesdell in the back on the 12-yard line. You're going to see three yellow flags, obvious as can be. Arizona's going to start on their six-yard line. Oh, you just took the drama out of that one, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> We await the official call from a referee, John Love. I'll say Glasper took During the, the return, out. illegal block in the back, receiving team number 94. Half the distance for goal. First down, Arizona. Tyree Glasper. Let's see if we can pick it up on the yeah, replay. You'll see it right about now. Boom, right there. And that's how, right there. And that's how Truesdale ends up on the ground. Right. And as Mike says, back to the six yard line. So from six points to the six yard line. Nick Davila, under center. He was rattled in the first half, sack three times. First pass complete to Windsor along the dasher board. Rod Windsor had six catches for 43 yards, a pair of touchdowns in that first half. Davila, we talk about the three sacks, but very efficient throwing the ball, though he was intercepted once. 14 of 16 for 132 yards and four touchdowns. Again, not Arizona's not totally out of sync offensively, but a bit, and it's changed their play calling. Now here's a five-step variety drop. In a double coverage, incomplete, intended for Kerry Reed. And Arizona likes to go deep. They like the, the three and five-step routes, but they had to alter and go to the, the one-step routes or the quick tosses because of the ferocious Spokane front four, that pass rush. Ferocious, not a word that we've been able to use to describe Spokane's defense, frankly, at least for much of this season, but they have answered the call. Vintage, what we saw last year when they racked up 40 sacks. 
Incomplete flag on the play. And I believe the Jack linebacker was out of the box. What was the call? Uh, I think you've got pass interference there. I think you have an arm wrap by the shock defensive back, number 26. Pass interference, defense, number 26. Ten-year penalty, automatic first down. You'll, you'll see the left arm wrap. If you get a look at the left arm and then a little, yeah, and then a little push in the back. So, yeah, we are only seeing the tail end, but there was a bit of a wrap with the left arm. That was probably more incidental, but when he pushed him in the back and rerouted him, that's where the flag was. There's that short screen pass. Well defended for Spokane. We talk about the pass rush. 40 sacks last year for Spokane. It's most in at least five years. By comparison, going into tonight with four games remaining in the season, Spokane half that total at 20, Mike, but three more sacks here this evening. Davila now just three of his last seven. Make it four for eight. Cruz kept the play alive on the dasher board, and he will get the first down. And Terrence Taylor is holding his arm or shoulder. Back at the line of scrimmage. Taylor being helped up by Ruffin. And he's in some pain right now. He's pretty well shaken up, so we'll we'll see. But it's something in that. I wonder if that's a stinger. Right arm, right shoulder. That, that's where he's grabbing right now. You can see his his fingertips were kind of writhing a little bit. You see right if we can catch middle, it on the replay. Right in the middle. Just kind of rolled up on his arm. Really hard to say what happened there, but sometimes you just come down a little bit awkward and it stresses certain parts of the elbow shoulder joint. That may be what happened. We'll take the injury timeout. 12.25 to play. Arizona ball, first and 10 when we come back. There's the Arizona Rattlers, Nick Davila, former Spokane Shock quarterback. Began his arena football career here in the AF2 with the shot. 38 and three as a starter. Helped them win the Arena Cup in 2009. A illustrious career that keeps on going into the AFL. First and 10 from the 14, Davila off the turf. Cruz somehow made the shoestring tackle, or excuse me, catch, but Shocker contending that that was on the turf. It should be incomplete. And it was close. Let's look at the replay, but this is one Spokane may consider challenging. The referee. Yeah, oh, that's on the turf. That's, yeah, that's oh, absolutely. Turf. I'd throw the challenge flag because there's your visual evidence right there, and this baby will come back. Red flag on the field. Andy Olson, how much does he want this win? How much does he need this win? The ruling uh, on the field is a completed Andy pass. Spokane Cruz is challenging that ruling. Holder. That play is under further review. Uh, yeah, obviously, we heard they were going to have, have guys, a review. These it, coaches work such long hours, make so many sacrifices. The they want to have some good the news. They want to have a good day at the office. The well, and still in the playoff hunt, Jesse. even though it's been, you look at the record, and it's – it's a it's an abysmal record. You can't sugarcoat it by shock standards, but you're still in the hunt for even a third seed in the playoffs. So there's Andy talking, and, and how about the midseason acquisition of, of McCullough? The I mean, fan favorite. They, they've brought in some names from the past trying to help provide some leadership to this team. Yeah, it, it, leadership and, and some mentoring to a very young team. Here's the replay now on the challenge. There's yeah. full speed. And full speed, it looks close, but you start slowing this baby down, and you it looks like a, it's not even a, well, perhaps a clean catch at the start. There's a second angle. It looks but clean then he dripped, at real time. But then he just scoops it right off the turf, and you can see why the official ruled that, hey, a catch and a play on, because in, in real time, that's a split in hairs, but you slow it down with our HD cameras, and there's your answer. Hits the palm of the hands, the turf, and bounces back up. That ball was not corralled because look at the fingertips. The <laughs> fingertips, stay, yeah, the fans knew too. It's like, hey, it's, it's down, it hit the turf. But look at the palms. Look at the fingertips of a receiver. If a receiver catches it, you're gonna see the fingertips curl. 
Those were flat hands. Watch how flat the hands are. He never secured it. The fingertips again, I can't stress it, curl if you catch the ball. The refs have seen enough. And this one is going to be incomplete. After further review, the ball did touch the ground. The receiver did not have control. The call is overturned. It's an incomplete pass. Second and 10, Arizona. Andy Olson now two for two on challenges tonight. And, and Olson challenges quite a bit. Not and not always is it upheld. Sometimes it just has to do with we don't have the camera angle to make it uh, discernible, but boy, he's on the mark tonight. Davila started this game 11 of 11 for 107 yards, three touchdowns. Since then, the Rattler has been rattled. Four of nine, 35 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Boy. That'll silence the crowd, though. It's Kerry Reed from 14 yards. Arizona has retaken the lead here early in the third. That's actually a run rather than a pass. That was a backward shovel. They may, we'll, we'll see how the, the officials score scores it, but that was all Kerry Reed. That was not Nick Davila. If they do give Davila a pass, that's one of those, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> easy completion, easy yards, and easy touchdown and quite frankly anyone could make that kind of toss and I'm not taking anything away from yeah. Davila I'm just saying that baby is on bait on Kerry Reed. Reed is now accounted for two touchdowns. Scotch is ready missed twice he's gonna miss a third time this one blocked it's and live. picked up it's Summers and now one of the offensive linemen for Arizona recovers at 63 Derek Dennis but boy oh boy Arizona has now missed three times there is a flag on the play. Both teams heading to their respective benches here. Now the flag at the 16, clearly after the block, after the so was blocked, we'll sort it out. Illegal forward pass, Spokane, number 56. The penalty is declined by rule. We'll go to kickoff. Timeout on the field. And now we'll take the timeout. Arizona has retaken the lead. It's at one, 32 to 31. So we take a look at our VPI Windows Custom Fit for Life scoreboard. Spokane Shock Football on SWX being brought to you by Spokane Boys, your answer for all seasons. It's been an interesting season to say the least for Spokane. Four and 10 on the season, but in the thick of the playoff chase right now and they have Arizona very much within reach trailing by one with 10.53 to play in the third. Anthony Amos, what a stellar first half for the rookie. Nine catches, 95 yards, two touchdowns. He also had a return of 27 yards on a kickoff. And he conceded a yard and a touchdown on that strange play during the one minute drill. Worked out for Spokane, but Boy, did it night. ever. Scotch's kick is up. And it's into the stands. So no return for Amos. It'll be a touchback for Spokane. How about Arvell Nelson? Slow start for him, but now 14 for 23, 152 yards, two touchdowns passing, one interception. He also has a rushing touchdown in what is his AFL starting debut as a quarterback. And, and that's interesting to point out because he's not a rookie in this league, but by all intents and purposes, he is a rookie at quarterback. Boy, here's Bryson Kelly on the run. Now, if you're watching in Ellensburg right now, you know this young man can run the football. He was a standout running back at Central Washington. He was brought over as a defensive player here for Spokane. But now today, tonight, Mike, really carving a niche as a runner. And Spokane as an offensive team has made adjustments as well. And the run is now a, an effective part of the offense. And Spokane's always been known for just airing it out. Truesdale, the catch, his first of the second half, wrapped up at the 20, took three Rattlers to finally bring him down. That is his third catch for Nick Truesdale. Some of our premier pack partners here once again this evening. First response, clothing. 
First response, water damage. Spokane has been embattled as far as the wide receiver position goes, but down the stretch, if they can keep these guys healthy, it's going to be Amos, Carter, and Truesdale. And these guys all bring something different to the table. Truesdale, your, your big target. He's also fast, but more of a straight-ahead runner. Amos, he can be really shifty. And here is Truesdale with some blocks to the 10, five in into the end zone. No flags on the play. Truesdale from 29 yards, shock have the lead. The way he gallops in the open field at 6'7", he's a pretty runner. Looks like a gazelle to me when he gets in the open field. Just a thing of beauty. And big for Spokane to answer after Arizona took the lead. Rowan tacks on the point after as Nelson dials up his third touchdown pass of the evening. Shock lead at 38 to 32. Nick Truesdale with his 21st touchdown catch in just 13 games on our VPI Home Solutions scoring recap. Three plays, 45 yards in a minute and 39 seconds. There's a tall glass of water. All 6'7". Yep. All the upside in the world. And Spokane has been trying to find a way to utilize him properly, take his skill set, and let him take care of the rest. And that's not an embellished six foot seven. That is a true. Oh, another bar ball, Mike. Well played by Cruz. He's not going to get out of the end zone. Spokane playing for the fumble. It came loose. They did not recover, but boy, oh boy, they made statement after statement here on special teams. The official dropping the beanbag, signal, signifying fumble, and but if the Arizona made an attempt to get out of the end zone, it is a touchback. By rule, the ball is placed at the three-yard line. First down, Arizona. But no mention of the beanbag and the fumble. But maybe we can see it from a different angle. Ball's loose, beanbag goes down, there's the beanbag, signifies the fumble, and it's recovered by Arizona. So there you go. McCullough rolled right over. Great camera angle, that tells the story, correct ruling. Davila, the deep drop, throwing downfield, there's Windsor, right into a fan, he couldn't hold on. Does number nine, the fan, get a pass breakup? <laughs> McMillan almost had the interception on the dasher board again. Yeah, that, that's what I call a double team. McMillan on the inside and number nine, the fan, on the outside. Now, that fan from, I mean, real time, I, I, I was watching, didn't look like the fan was reaching over. No, it just kind of went into him. Let's take a look here, but you'll see right there, he just kind of went into the fan, hit the fan's torso. After that, the fan's like, hey, I want a ball. Reed with the catch, Don Masters with the tackle, a yard shy of the first down. Third down and one coming up. Spokane is not one here in its hometown on its home field in two months. Flag on the play, that'll be offsides, live football. Gilliam to tackle, Gru, uh, Cruz picking up the first down. Yeah, and it's, I think it's going to be Terrence Taylor. Even if he didn't come across, he was out of his stance, so it'll be illegal, illegal defense or formation. So again, worth noting that Taylor back on the football field after that injury timeout. Offside defense, number 67, in the neutral zone at the snap, five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. He is truly the eye of the storm on this defense. When him, Taylor, Taylor, Summers, Ruffin, when those guys have time to get to the quarterback, they will get to the quarterback. And it's a whole new ball game when that happens. Oh, Taylor is one of the best in the league. He is a major force in the middle, and the league knows it. Oh, ball came loose and went out of bounds. Gilliam 
pulled it away from one of those shock fans. He's a running back, if we call him a, a running back, Michael Benson, he's the fullback, the big fella, and just lost the ball. It did not go forward, so it's at the spot where it went out of bounds. Second down. It's worth mentioning as well as we take a look at this fumble that Arizona now three of three on third down conversions. This is a second down and 10. Still 10 on the play clock as Davila audibles at the line. Windsor the catch. Tackle by Dodd Masters. Dodd Masters with a big hit earlier in this ball game, and I think that's one of those plays that set the tone for the ball game. Dodd Masters, pound for pound, is one of the strongest players on the shock team, making him pound for pound, probably one of the strongest players in the league, and he's been around a long time, takes his conditioning very seriously. Third down and four. Avila, short throw, Cruz caught it at the 20, and then he's speared down to the ground by Gilliam. And lifted up in the air by Dodd Masters. Oh, excuse me, Dodd Masters. Uh, kind of a deadlift, and then his teammates coming in, helping him clean up, so. <laughs> and, and that's classic. It's called wrap, and then when you team tackle, that's when you take your shots. But look how he wraps. There's the strength, lifts him up, and then there's the assist. That was actually... Just chainsaw yeah. coming in and helping him. Chainsaw help cut him down. From the 19 in shock territory, Reed is the motion man. Throwing to Reed. There was contact at the goal line between him and McMillan. No flag on the play. It's incomplete. And McMillan had the position on Reed, at which point all the contact was incidental. You'll see McMillan has the position he was inside if anything it's Reed running through McMillan not just if anything it was Reed running through McMillan second down and 10 Davila now 18 of 25 for 165 yards got the playoff with two on the shot uh, play clock into the end zone intercepted by McMillan it was intended for Windsor and McMillan just plucked it out out of midair. Second interception thrown by Davila, and the Shock have the football. All year since McMillan's been on this roster, we have talked about his athleticism, and boy, he is showing it tonight. Another incredibly athletic play. And we're talking, this is the Davila to Windsor connection here. I mean, we were talking, and anybody would agree, that that is the most dynamic passing combination you're going to find in arena football. And they've been essentially shut down, the two of them. From the four, this is Amos. Amos with a stutter step. Gets it past the 15-yard line. Folks, if you're at home right now, call your friends, tell them to join you, tell them to tune in and watch. We have the game of the year right now for Spokane Shock football. And a big upset in the making. Again, remember, last home game, Spokane was in this game against Arizona. A late turnover was Spokane's undoing. Uh-oh, and watch out. It's Bryson Kelly. The Arena Football League not known for its running game. Not since the AF2 days have we seen the shock run quite like this. And this is a new wrinkle, and I like it. And something Arizona, I guarantee you, has not game planned for because we've not seen Spokane roll this out. Gain of nine on the run by Kelly. And with Kelly being a former college running back, he knows how to carry the ball. Kelly is going to be close on his fifth carry at just around 20 yards. Now, and it is a first down. Now you won't see play action in the AFL, and the reason why is because you've got the jack in the box. As soon as you fake a run or play action, the jack in the box rule goes away, and they now can become a blitzer. 
So it's just it's straight up running or straight drop back passing. There's Nick Truesdale. Well, he's had some big plays on not only on offense but on special teams. Arvell going to be brought down for the sack. He might have botched the exchange a little bit and then tried to pull a little Russell Wilson in reverse field, but McAdoo in that defense savvy none of that. And is that McAdoo saying, hey, I'm down. I need I need some training assistance. That's Mike McAdoo, number 90. That is McAdoo. Let's see what happens to McAdoo, number 90. But he can watch his lower leg on this and just kind of gets wrapped up. But he's he's down right now on the five-yard line being attended to. His own teammate just ran right into him as he was making that tackle. And he was limping pretty good coming down here. We'll take a timeout with 155 to play in the third. The shock lead it by six, 38 to 32. Right, shock have been short on big plays for much of the season. They've found the big plays here tonight. Nick Truesdale, Anthony Amos providing four plays of 15 or more yards for the shock. Arizona just one play of 15 yards or more. They've needed those big plays. They've gotten them so far. Have the shock. 140 to play in the third. Second and 16. Arvell throws on the pump. And it's Amos. And it's incomplete. Well covered by Kellum. Kellum's an awfully good defensive back. One of the better ones in the league. That's a tough guy to go after, but Spokane's been successful. Kellum wins that battle. Well thrown. I mean, that's the only guy who's going to get there is going to be Amos. Yeah. He's now, done that twice to him now on deep ball. Now, if that ball was thrown to the outside shoulder, Amos has a chance. But when it drifted the inside, Kellum had too good a coverage. Lob to Carter, who's hammered, absolutely jackhammered by Marquise Floyd. And Arizona showing they can hit too. <laughs> That's the problem. When you throw it over the Jack linebacker, you loft it up. That's enough time for those defenders to close in and hit hard. Yeah, and with that dasher board coming at you, that's uh, that, that was just a great defensive play. And now we're talking fourth down here, Sam. Fourth down and 16 after that pass breakup. Caught short. Wow, what an open field tackle there by Kerry Reed on Rashad Carter. I beg your pardon, that's Floyd. Floyd on the Marquise coverage and the Floyd. tackle. Physical play. Now, the, the crowd here booing, they want a horse collar tackle. I don't think it was. Nah, the horse collar is when you get your hands inside the shoulder pads. He was around the shoulder pads, but that's, nah, that's nothing. I did scrape the helmet on the way down, but that's about it. Yeah, that's not a horse collar. I like the play. Give, you, give your guy a chance. Carter almost pulled it, pulled it out. From the 17, Arizona. Turnabout is fair play as Reed runs the football. And the same play, only this time to the right side that resulted in that last touchdown for Arizona. And through three quarters of play, Spokane is clinging to a six point lead. We head to the fourth where the defending Arena Bowl champion Rattlers trail the Spokane Shock. 38 to 32. Special thank you to all of those who have served or are serving in the armed forces. Ruffin, he'd be a good Marine, wouldn't he? Oh man, I want him on my side. Navy SEAL even. He's agile. Yeah. He's, boy, got, boy. he's got the mentality. Oh. We talk about the shock defense as we welcome you back here to Spokane for the start of the fourth quarter. It ranks dead last in any major category you look, but that's really not fair to pin that exclusively on the defense. But it has been a down year for a defense that prides itself on hard hits and big plays, and boy, have they delivered here tonight. Well, with, with Davila and Ruffin, and there was a poll at the start of the year, the best players in the AFL, those two players were in the top three. Davila to start this 
fourth quarter, completes it to Cruz. Davila, before last week's game, had thrown just four interceptions all season through two INTs last week in that win against Las Vegas. That was the first time this year he's thrown multiple interceptions. He's followed that up with two more interceptions thrown tonight. Four INTs now in the last two games, uncharacteristic to say the least. Flag on the play as it's incomplete as Gilliam kind of shielded the receiver there from seeing that ball in. Yeah, Gilliam saw the corner route Saw, read the throw and said, hey, I'm going to undercut this and see if I can't come up with an interception. Offside on the offense. Number 15, high motion man was offside. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. As we start this fourth quarter, 38 to 32, it's worth noting that the end of the third quarter, last time out against Arizona for Spokane, it was tied up at 34-34. Arizona may be, if not the best team, right up there in the top two or three. Nobody's played these guys tougher this year than Spokane. First down and 20 from their own 21. Screenplay, Windsor almost broke it loose. Tackled by McCullough. Taylor also in there. It's short of the original line of scrimmage down to the 22-yard line on the other side of the field. That's a textbook quick-hitting play, very well executed. Davila getting the ball out quick. Windsor working inside off the block and then just physically getting his eight yards out of that. Very quiet night for Windsor. Nine catches for 62 yards. Cruz is in motion. Davila to throw. Windsor the catch right at the first down marker. Dodd Masters with the tackle to move the chains. They're inside the 10 in the red zone at the nine. Windsor four straight games of 100 or more yards. He's 25 yards away from making it five in a row. Now, it has been back and forth. 26-21 Arizona, then Spokane went up 28-26, that field goal, and then it's been seesaw since then. A lot of lead changes. Windsor the catch inside the five. Dodd Masters again on the tackle. Down to the three. And pressure on Davila. That was a throw under duress. Davila very cool in the pocket, able to get it away. But the pressure's there. It's been relentless. Arizona rolls out a lot of tricks here. They, they, they will go to the tight end. They'll run. And of course, pass is typically their primary option. If they run, it's not Davila. It'll be fullback or a high motion guy. Left tackle move. Indeed, he did. That's Dennis, number 63, on the left side of the offensive line. False start, offense, number 63. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. This is where Spokane wants its crowd to get loud. McCullough telling the media earlier this week that the ninth man deserves better here at home. They're getting better here tonight. Second and goal from the shock eight. Ruffin the tackle. Boy, that's not a favorable matchup for Ruffin, but he uses that pure, uh, pure strength to bring down the much bigger Derek Dennis. Well, and Ruffin sniffed this out. If we watch a replay, Ruffin came hard and realized, hey, this is a, this is to the tight end, and dang near sniffed this baby out. Remember, Ruffin's the edge rusher. He showed incredible agility to stop, change direction, and come backwards, because he sensed that was a pass to the tight end. Crowd on its feet, third down and goal from the eight. Cruz through the screen, down to the two. McMillan with a touchdown saving tackle, fourth down and goal coming up. Crunch time on a drive. 
you have to love this. Fourth and goal from the two. Arizona needs a touchdown. They're not going to kick a field goal. Ninth man, Sam, they understand the situation, and they're rising to the occasion. Fourth and goal from the shock two. To Windsor, dropped it, it was in his bread basket. Turnover on downs, the shock make the stop. Is that a break or what? Windsor, <laughs> sure handed, just flat drops the ball. On the VPI score, it's 38 to 32. Rod Windsor, 11 catches, 81 yards, two touchdowns, and one dropped pass in the end zone. And you can see he looked up. That is a lack of concentration, not watching the ball into his hands. You clearly see it on that shot. Recipe for disaster. Throws to Carter. Rashad makes the catch, and he'll pick up the first down. On the reception. Spokane showing heart and competitiveness all night long, and they were in a position down 20 to seven, and another Spokane turnover, and could have hung their head. And in the past, that would have been it for Spokane, irrecoverable, and here they are with the lead, with the momentum here in the fourth quarter. Watch out for Bryson Kelly in the backfield. Pitches to Kelly, runs it left side, just like he did in college. Taking those precious seconds off the clock with nine and a half to play in a six point ball game. I'm impressed. You said watch Bryson Kelly. Do you have a, you listening in on Andy Olson's play call? It's pretty good, Sam. You go, you go to enough games, Mike. You go to enough practices, you know. You're getting this thing figured out. You got it figured out. It's a great call. It worked, right? UN Coach Olson. Offensive line play. jump. Defensive line jump, excuse me. Yes. And Amos makes the catch. I am so impressed with the play of Anthony Amos. Here's a guy who comes into the league just trying to figure the game out. Offside defense, 77 in the neutral zone on the snap. I think that is decline. Result of the play. First down. And he's been thrown right into the fire. And really. You'd be hard-pressed to find anybody in the Arena Football League over the last few weeks that has played better than Anthony Ames. 168 all-purpose yards so far for Anthony well, tonight. And you combine that with some of the routes he's been running, he's mesmerized a lot of these Rattler defenders. Oh, pass was broken up. That was Cliff Dukes. He sniffed that play out very well. He did, and Arizona defenders have done a good job of getting their hands. There's been a lot of batted balls by the Arizona defenders. And that's hard. You know, when, when you're Arvell Nelson and, and you're you're talking about a guy that's six foot five, to to bat a ball away from a six five quarterback like that with a long wingspan, that's no easy task. Amos, the motion man on second down and 10. It's a bullet right to him on the numbers. Amos catches it, still fighting for yards near the five yard line. And they're inside the 10. The shock are back inside the KFC red zone. Nelson is doing a great job playing this Arizona defense. Looking to the right, a little bit of a shoulder kind of pump fake and checking off to the proper read. He is seeing the field and reading it very well. 12 yards on that pickup. First down and goal from the six. Maybe Kelly here. Fumble on the snap and a false start against the offense. I, I tell you, if you look at, we, we know what this is, so I'll talk over the referee, but <laughs> these red zone penalties snap of Kilt's Number 51, five yard penalty, repeat first down. And Spokane, despite the penalties, is still tonight played much better inside the red zone. Four of five in the first half. That's much better than before, but they need to shore up some things for sure. 
And for you fans wondering, what is a snap infraction? The snap must be one continuous motion from the start of it. So if you hitch, pull back, it's a it's an illegal snap. Throws to Amos. Juggling catch for the touchdown. Amos, his third score of the night, and it comes with 7-10 to play in the fourth. You may have seen Amos make an incredible one-handed catch in college. It was voted in a well-respected poll, the number two catch that year in all of college football while at Middle Tennessee State. That one right might be up there. Rowan yet to miss, the PAT is good, and with 6.38 to play, the Shock lead at 45 to 32 on our VPI Windows custom Fit for Life scoreboard. Oh, there's some, I mean, just smiles. When's the last time we've seen that? Patrick Afif, Anthony Amos, they're loose. Patrick Afif has played in every game this season for Spokane. There's a journeyman warrior for you. Came from right down the road, Washington State University. Taylor Rowan, two bar balls already. Hasn't missed a kick either on a 35-yard field goal attempt. And PATs as well. He's dialed in through the slack net this time on a touchback. Six plays, 48 yards. A drive that ate up three minutes and 20 seconds, which in arena football is actually a pretty lengthy drive as far as time and yardage. So Spokane driving all but the extra two yards to get into the end zone. Fifth straight red zone score, by the way, for Spokane. And Nick Davila. And the Rattlers, though they're not in panic mode, they need to find some sort of rhythm against Kevin McCullough and a stingy defense. And a ninth man who is really into this game. Fabula with time. Windsor made the catch. Dodd Masters can't believe it. He was that close to getting an interception. Spokane's playing for picks. They, they are Arizona DBs are known for ball hawking. Spokane is ball hawking tonight. They're undercutting receivers and taking that chance and going for turnovers. And it's worked. Not every time. But boy, Dodd Masters is close there. Deep ball. Windsor was looking at the official the whole time. And uh, he ran can, down the field. Yeah, and I think you're going to get a hold. Hold on, Spokane, down the field. Little too much bumping and holding going on. Illegal contact, defense, number 26. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. That's on McMillan, not Dodd Masters for what it's worth. Go ahead, you'll find him. <laughs> so Arizona now on the shock side of the field at the 24. Davila under duress, brought down by Ruffin on the sack. Fourth time that Spokane has brought down the lefty Davila, and it comes in a huge play with five minutes and change to play. And again, to put this in perspective, a remarkable eight straight games without the O-line giving up a sack, and here's number four for the Spokane team, and it's a beauty in the second for Ruffin. Put it in perspective, Mike, going into this game, Arizona had allowed eight sacks all season. The pitch here on second down at 14 will be well shy of the first down. It's to the 20 as Reed is six yards shy of the first down marker. A little two-handed shovel pass or pitch, depending on if the ball goes forward or backwards, has been a very effective play and what we'll call the safety play for this offense. Because anytime Spokane gets a sack, Kevin Guy, head coach, offensive coordinator, is just not taking chances and going to the five-step drop. 
Rush coming again. Davila steps right through it. Precision pass to Windsor as he was wrapped up by Gilliam. He's down at the nine, and it moves the chains. Arizona's down at the nine. Great presence of mind by Davila to step up into that pass rush and complete it. Inside of four minutes in a 13-point ball game. First and goal from the nine. Pick play, oh, almost intercepted. Dodd Masters had it momentarily. Then McMillan almost had it, and it falls incomplete. And Arizona has been going to the well on these short safety plays a couple times too often, and Spokane has seen it so many times. They're keying in on it. And you can see Arizona receivers hurry, and Spokane's D has got the Arizona offense a bit out of sync. Not totally out of sync, but it's making an impact. On second and goal, deep drop for Davila, lobs one into the end zone and caught wide open was Kerry Reed. And boy, did Arizona need that one. And Arizona not out of sync on that play. That was easy. Davila with that, now 244 yards passing, though it's come on 37 attempts. And Reed has his second touchdown reception of the night. He also has a rushing touchdown as well. Five touchdown passes now for Davila. They'll go for the two here. Extra push, ball loose. It's a live, no, it's not a live football. McMillan is going to take that back for two points. The try is no good. So the PAT for a fourth time, Arizona unable to tack on the extra points. 45 to 38, hang on to your hats. We've got a great one here inside the arena. Shock leading this one with two and a half to play, 45 to 38, we look and revisit our keys to the game. Looking well, good. And, and Spokane's nailing both of them. Being competitive, Spokane, and I go back to down 20 to seven, you have a turnover, it did not look good, and Spokane has just continued to fight, and they're nailing that, and we are seeing some great quarterback play from Nelson and a supporting cast. Now, this be competitive, that's a theme. Can Spokane be competitive and finish out a fourth quarter? Something they have not had a history of doing this year. They did it against Orlando, who's a, a number four ranked team. We're gonna look at an onside kick here. Can Spokane finish? Now they have their hands team out parked at the 10 yard line. Remember, the kick has to reach the 10. It will be an onside attempt. High squibber, and it's fielded at the 10 by Truthdale. Almost took it in. How special, and pun fully intended, has Nick Truesdale been tonight? All aspects of the game. He's just one of those fun players to watch. He just, oh, he's just, just a remarkable athlete. And Look, he can't coach height. 6'7", goes up, secures it. That's a heck of a pop-up kick. Didn't quite go, it went right at about 10 yards. That is a perfect pop-up kick. You know how you counter that? Yeah. You throw a 6'7 athlete in there with a ton of heart. And, and you don't wait for it. You go up and get it, and that's what Nick did there. So they take over from the KFC red zone and Kelly runs it down to the one yard line. We're inside of two minutes. And as long as Spokane scores a touchdown here, the fact Kelly didn't get in is actually good because the clock is going tick, 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 tick. Ideally, if, if the shock can take off another play here and then get in, they could conceivably take this down to the one minute warning. Nelson cuts right to the chase, his second rushing touchdown. You gotta crawl before you learn to walk. He's been running wild here tonight, and Spokane has taken a 51 to 38 lead. And Spokane, because the clock's live, will let this run down to one minute before they kick the PAT. Smart strategy, let it run. 
with that, we are now at the one minute warning. You can't call it a back breaking touchdown, but boy, was that a big one for Arvell Nelson in the shot. What it certainly was, was a big answer to the Davila to Reed touchdown pass. And Rowan's kick is true. Arvell Nelson has come up big again, folks. 52 to 38, one minute to play. We're at the one minute mark here, 52 to 38. Spokane trying to blow this game wide open. They've scored on six red zone opportunities. That ties the season high, remember, been talking all night long about their travails, their struggles inside the 10. They have come up big here tonight. What if Rowan found the bar on this kick? He does. Cruz out to the five. Hit hard down to the 10 yard line. And the reason I point that out, and in Nolan Taylor over the years, once he gets dialed in, He's, he hits that lower right-hand corner where he's been aiming for all night, and it's uncanny how accurate he gets. Hey, and let's be honest. Spokane has had a hard time scoring points this year. You need to score points to kick off. So the more points you score, the more opportunities Taylor Rowan has to get dialed in to kick off. That's a great point. And the more you're able to practice indoors with the Nets, the more you're able to get dialed in as well, which early in the season, all the kickers report late to camp. You're kicking indoors. You're Two not, fouls occurred you're on not the totally play. dialed in with these Nets. Receiving team holding number nine. Kick catch interference number three. That is a double after foul. The ball belongs to Arizona. At the end of the play by rule, first and 10, Arizona. And the kick catch interference is, uh, there's a shot of Taylor Rowan, is when the, uh, that's a danger of the bar ball. When it bounces up in the air, the kickoff team has to have that buffer. They cannot cross the five yard line. Let's watch this until the ball is touched by the receiver. So there's the bar, there's the touch, and you can clearly see players inside the five yard line. There's your kick catch interference. Drive starts from the Arizona six. Davila under pressure, short arm that one and incomplete. And Davila just had to bail, avoid a sack, avoid a safety and take the incompletion. And great coverage by the DBs. Sergio Gilliam out there, winding up the crowd. Chainsaw, winding up the crowd. Oh, it's like we're playing in 2008. It's getting that feel at this point in the game, and the fans know it. Very educated fans. Davila with time on that, and it's complete to read. Clock stops along the dasher board, though it is shy of the first down at the 14. And Arizona needs to take their shots because it's a two-possession game. They do have all three timeouts. It is a lot of time, but. If you're going to go the dink and dunk underneath, you better get out of bounds or you're burning timeouts or clock. The, the Spokane front four pass rush has really set a tone and changed the complexion of this game. Four on the play clock. They've got to get this off quick. Davila, deep strike. He's got Reed open. He dropped it. McMillan on the coverage. And Reed, perhaps being a little lazy, pulling that ball in and tucking. McMillan staying with the play and looked like stripping it away. We couldn't tell from our angle, but it sure looked like that's what happened from, from our angle. Here we go, let's take a peek. Stripped him. Game on the line right here for Arizona, which has won eight games in a row and is battling San Jose for the number one seed 
in the National Conference. Fourth down, deep throw. Windsor makes the catch at the five yard line. What a grab by Rod Windsor, despite great coverage by McMillan. That is an incredibly gutsy play <laughs> and unbelievable execution in that moment. Fourth and one, and you take your shot down the field. 31 yards on that completion. Outstanding throw. Windsor using that big physical body to shield McMillan from the ball. My goodness, what a play. Clock stopped with 36 seconds. Arizona does have two timeouts remaining. At the five yard line, first down and goal. And the other layer of strategy, you gotta score first. What do you do on the PAT with the issues they've had with their kicker? Bobby Lane in the end zone, a drop by Reed. That is two drops in the end zone by Arizona Rattlers receivers. What is going on? First of all, how is Reed that wide open? And then, footnote, how does he drop it? A repeat of Windsor, and again, they're in, not concentrating. There's this nobody in the screen. Some, that is lack of concentration or someone or something is in their head. That just doesn't happen. They're too good of receivers. Second and goal. Won't drop that one. So this time it's Dan Buckner, 6'5 receiver out of Arizona who makes the catch with 26 seconds to play. And he takes it right to the goal line bandits. Now Scotch at the kicker is out for Arizona. <laughs> and he has been less than sensational on PATs tonight. He's missed twice and had a third one blocked on PATs. Arizona also went for on a two point conversion. So they missed four times, but this one is true. And it's a seven point game on a huge touchdown and PAT. Have another look at the Davila touchdown pass. It really led the receiver perfectly there. Yeah, Buckner wide open, and he said, by golly, I'm getting my shot here. I'm going to watch the ball in all the way. Look, there's the goal line bandits right behind him. The one thing you don't do as a guy down there is talk back. <laughs> the, the, the goal line bandits are going to win that one. They're, yeah. they're, they're too polished at this. <laughs> they do this for a living. <laughs> there they are. They're the bandits. They're the first ones here. They're here every game. They could be 0-14 and, and these guys would still be here. And they have one job and one job only. Get in the head of the opponents. That's it. That's their job. And they relish it. You're just glad they're on your side oh, if yes. you're a shock. So clearly an onside situation here. Mike. There is no way you're kicking this ball away. And if you can, kick away from Nick Truesdale. <laughs> Find him on the football field and kick away from 81. Scotch's kick, little dribbler this time. Still live, how did that score it out there? Hit the dasher board, dead ball. That was alert play. And Credit Arbel Nelson to swat that ball right into the dasher board. And that was that was a scary moment for Spokane and an opportunistic moment for Arizona. Now here's where the shock running offense is big, Mike, because early on in this game it was dicey. Here's a replay. I think it was touched by Arizona before crossing the 10. Was, it was close, but regardless, all for naught. And you can see that's being aware of that's not trying to corral the ball. That's bat the ball, the dasher board, because on a kickoff, the ball hits a dasher board, dead ball, receiving team gets the ball, spot of the foul. And that is effectively to prevent the kicking team from kicking it right in and playing pinball off the dasher board. Exactly. See what the shock do here with 20 seconds to play. It'll be Nelson on the keeper he moves forward and Arizona will use its second timeout so in the two minute rules the clock the clock 
will stop on a neg on a no gain or negative yardage play or no gain. You must get positive yardage. So what Spokane needs, and they're already one for three, three consecutive positive yardage runs, game's over. And this is the antithesis of football as we know it. In the NFL, in this situation, you drop back, you take a knee. In arena football, you can't do that. You actually have to move forward. You have to be aggressive, you have to secure the ball, and anything can happen. And Arizona knows the situation. They're gonna be tugging at that ball. Need to secure it. 16th rushing attempt of the game right here for the shot. And Arizona will expend its final timeout with 13 seconds. Clearly, their only hope now, Mike Peterson, is to force a turnover. Otherwise, this game is over. You called it. Arizona has one play to force a fumble. Because if they don't, and Spokane gets positive yardage, Spokane is banking a huge upset win. And these fans are giving the players the love right now that they, that they deserve as well. Who would have thought? This drought could possibly come to an end here at home against the defending arena football champions. Nelson moving forward. They whistle the play dead. And it's a and dead it's, ball. It's a dead ball. He did not get right, forward progress. So signs of life right now for Arizona. Slim as they are. So if you're Spokane, two choices, kick a field goal, put this thing out of reach. No, I, I don't think anyone's going to agree with that. I just said two choices, no, the smart choice, just get your positive yardage and put this one in the books. On fourth down and eight, would it run all the way down? If, if they don't pick up the first down, if they run it forward, they get positive yards? Actually, great point. It is fourth down. I was overlooking the yeah. fact it yeah. is fourth down. So that that opens up your playbook a little bit. Yeah, actually, given that, thank you, Sam, for pointing out it's fourth down. I think Spokane may pass. Boy. And why not? Because if you don't get a first down, you're not going to get first down running. Clock stop. All you can do is do a prolonged run, perhaps, and leave Arizona with maybe four seconds on the clock, no timeouts, and one Hail Mary play. Okay, I, so here's the Taylor Rowan angle. Either that or you shotgun, and you have your running, your quarterback basically sprint down to the five-yard line. And so, that, that's as unconventional as it gets. So I go back to my two choices. First one said, bring out your field goal kicker. Well, I was not realizing or recognizing, shame on me at the time, it was fourth down. This is absolutely the right call because it is fourth down. Rowan to attempt perhaps as one of the more important field goals of this season. 20, 25 yards out, off the bar, live ball with one second on the clock. And one second remains and Arizona has the football. And the beauty of that for Spokane is it burned a lot of time and the miss pins Arizona back inside their five. And that's too far a throw because you're thinking maybe Cleveland last year, Hail Mary off, off the, the net. net, but here, this is too far a throw to realistically get it off the net. It, and perhaps maybe Mike not too deep a throw, but not enough time. Not enough time to get a throw like that off. Yeah, and especially with the Spokane rush. Oh my goodness. If you're Nick Davia, you're you're really hoping your offensive line protects because Spokane is going to come at you hard with that front four. I'm thinking more of a hook and ladder type play, personally. Yeah, yeah trick play rather than a Hail Mary is probably the more is probably the smarter play. Higher odds. Davila throws. Here's Windsor, his clock expires to the 12, and game over. The Shock have toppled the defending Arena Football League champions, and they've done it here on their home field, 52 to 45. First win for the Shock in Spokane since May 8th. 
It's been more than a, two months since the Shock have given the ninth man a win here, and they do it against the defending Arena Bowl champions. And Spokane now with Portland playing San Jose, unless Portland upset San Jose, just went front and center and marched that much closer to securing a playoff spot. There's James Ruffin, stellar defensive effort from him. The offense steps up big as well, putting up 52 points against Arizona. Let's present tonight's player of the game. It is presented by Triple Play Family Fun Park, where fun is always in season. Anthony Amos, all smiles tonight as he is our player of the game. Some clutch catches in. One of the best catches you're going to see in arena football this yeah. season. Perhaps catch of the game there as well. How fitting. So Amos, a little more famous here tonight in Spokane. He is our triple play family fun park player of the game. Folks, when we come back, we'll get your post game show. The Shock have stunned the Rattlers 52 to 45. Welcome back to the Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena, where the Shock have upset the Arizona Rattlers, ending their eight-game winning streak. 52 to 45. Shock improved to five and ten on the season, and the playoff picture has just changed a whole lot in the National Conference. Not only with this upset win, but with other developments, but. We're, we're trying to get an interview here. Well, Coach Anthony is saying. Amos has been elusive, not only for the defensive secondary, but also for our cameras. But I'll tell you what, how, how about, first of all, I, I know Amos played so well, and he deserves to be our, our player of the game. How about, first of all, the defense against Rod Windsor? That, you know, you talk about a guy that caught his 200th career touchdown reception then number 201 but for the most part Mike kept under wraps absolutely and Windsor and this offense for Arizona is known for big plays here's a remarkable stat out of tonight that last catch by Windsor and those were just gimme yards well well defended by Spokane I might say was the only the second Arizona play over 16 yards that is a shutdown defense and that's a team that Arizona comes in third in the league in scoring offense, 56.7 points.
points per game. Held a good 11 points below that average. And, you know, I mean, this, this is a team, too, that Arizona, number two in the AFL in scoring defense, 44. Arizona gave up 52 against Spokane, and we, we you know, if things play out a little different, the shock feel like they probably left some points on the scoreboard. If anything, I yeah, mean, like like three points at the end of the game on the missed field goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, that added a little drama and the interception in the end zone as well. There were a couple yes. of turnovers, but still, Arizona has been stunned here, folks. And this this reminds me of what happened a couple months ago in May. I believe it was Memorial Day weekend when the LA Kiss beat the San Jose SaberCats. I mean, this has that kind of ramifications. It does. And then there's been some developments in the league as well and a couple ties on the win-loss column that throws all kinds of wild cards into this national yeah, we'll, conference we, race. We'll explain that in a moment. Arizona and San Jose in the national conference, they have already clinched their division titles. And with that, they've clinched either a one or a two. So right now, San Jose is clearly in the driver's seat to get that number one. Arizona, the clear number two. But things get really interesting for playoff spots three and four with this upset win for Spokane. So let's explain the ties. So you've got Las Vegas, you see five, nine, and one in the West Division, go over the American Conference, New Orleans, bottom right, two, 12, and one. Yeah. And you don't have ties in arena football, but huge. San Jose this year and it has not been pretty 
Meanwhile, against Arizona, they've beaten Arizona tonight. Their other two games were close. Absolutely. And <laughs> if you're Spokane, well, everyone wants that third seed. San Jose, Arizona, clearly the top two teams in the National Conference. And right now, by poll, top two teams in the AFL. But if you had your choice, you want to play Arizona rather than San Jose. And Spokane has played Arizona very close two out of the three games this season. Went down to the wire in the fourth quarter in the last game here in Spokane. And you have to wonder if just a little bit, if it comes down to it, if, if the shock are just a little bit inside the Rattlers' heads right now. Just a little bit. Uh, certainly after tonight, there's, got, there's some reshuffling of the, the gray matter for Arizona, but Arizona's got to go back and finish out their season. Arizona has San Jose on the schedule. They've got to hope for an upset and then hope the tiebreakers land in their favor. Long shot now for Arizona to be the number one seed. Now, there's Radical Rick, who he, he has to think next week, I don't care if the Shock wear red, white, and blue, that's a lucky hairstyle. I want, well, I actually think it is a great look, not only on Radical Rick, but I like the red, white, and blue helmets. My vote, roll out the red, white, and blue helmets again next week against Portland. Arvell Nelson, a big game in his first AFL start as a quarterback, completing 22 of 34 passes, 258 yards, four touchdowns. He also had two on the ground. He joins us right now. Arvell, congratulations on a big win for you as a team thank you i appreciate that well t take me through the game i mean you, you get the start and then you put arizona on the ropes yeah did, did you ever in a million years think this was possible oh yeah you know as a football player you know we're, we're competitors we never think we're going to lose when we step on that field so you know today game was up and down and i just was telling the guys on the sideline ride the wave ride the wave don't never get too high never get too low just ride the wave and you're gonna come out with a victory how big is this win for you guys i mean obviously for the standings the playoff picture we we just talked at length about that but as a team confidence wise you guys you guys now have your swagger back yeah we definitely do we definitely do because we got a we got a group of guys with swagger you know just you know play here play here we lose a few games man and it, and it kind of knocked the swagger out of you but you know we kept believing and swagger was out tonight arvell no question and what was just to me more impressive than anything down 20 to 7 slow start some adversity mm -hmm. Arizona got the ball off of a turnover. Defense had created a turnover, and then you went on a roll. Take us through those momentum swings and how you pulled out of that tailspin. Well, um, like I said earlier, man, we just try to ride the wave of the game. Um, guys just, just made plays for us, you know what I mean? We, we, didn't, we didn't do anything spectacular. We kept it simple. I put the, the ball in the playmakers' hands, and they made plays for us. Arvello, you talk about guys making plays. Did, we saw it, numerous replays. Did you get a good eye on Anthony's one-handed grab in the Yeah, I did, man, because when the ball left my hand, you know, I tried to just put it on him real quick. The ball left my hand, I felt inside. And when he put that hand out there and made that play, man, I, I, was, I went crazy. <laughs> I went crazy. So on, on the Arvell to Amos connection tonight, end of the first half, we're not sure. He caught the ball and then fell down on the one-yard line. Was that by design? Yeah, that, or was, that was intentional. We wanted to run some of the clock out. You know, he could have walked in the end zone, but being a smart player, you know, he's a rookie, but he's smart. You know, <laughs> he went down and, and burnt a few, a few seconds off the clock. Well, thanks for settling that one. We yeah. weren't sure. <laughs> now, looking ahead, I mean, I, I, you want to savor this a little bit, but now now you got to get ready for, you know, a, a game playoff. that has huge playoff right. implications right. for Portland. Right, yeah, yeah. We're going we to enjoy it tonight. Then, you know, tomorrow morning is is Portland. You know what I mean? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, uh, put in the pass, man, because we got a lot of football to play. All right. Uh, how is the mood inside the locker room after oh, the game? Oh, man, the boys is ready, man. They ready. <laughs> Fired up? Yeah, they are. All right. Hey, Arvell, great job. Congratulations on the victory. Appreciate it. All right. Arvell Nelson spending some time with us. And, yeah, they're going to celebrate tonight and then is back to work tomorrow morning. It's the business of winning football games and the time of year where and this, this is Spokane's playoffs. And I think it's safe to say it started tonight. Mike says it's, it's the business of winning football games. For a moment there, we thought Spokane – was out of business they are back in they've all come in they are all in and they pull off their biggest win of the year 
52 to 45. Folks, we invite you to stay tuned here on SWX because tonight at 1030, we'll have all your shock highlights. We'll have post game reaction from this victory. We will also sit down one on one with Chris Collinsworth of NBC Sports Sunday Night Football. Get his thoughts on the Super Bowl picture and what that call was when Seattle decided to pass instead of run his thoughts a few months later as we talked to Chris Collinsworth. Hey, special sign off to, to Brock who has helped us out for the last game this year. We appreciate all the hard work from Brock. Brock, you, you helped make us look good. Yeah. All those great stats we get, that's coming from Brock. Brock, you rock. For Mike Peterson, I'm Sam Adams saying so long. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Nick's happy. Nick, not so happy if your name is Davila. 52-45. Shock win it, and they are in control of their own destiny in the playoff picture. Big win. We'll see you next Saturday right here at Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena.